Russian forces enter Toretsk as battles rage in Donetsk region in Ukraine. Hungarian presidency priorities explained by Prime Minister in two-hour-long press conference. MEPs have held a debate on the crisis facing the European automotive industry. Preparations are underway in Florida as Category 5 Hurricane Milton closes in on the region. Russian forces are already in eastern Toretsk. Ukrainian military command confirmed saying that the fighting is taking place, quote, literally at every building entrance. Now, the situation near Toretsk has been difficult for months and the clashes on the town's outskirts were reported back in August. But over the past month, Moscow has intensified its focus and its assaults and Russian forces have been advancing into Toretsk since late September wildly using the highly destructive guided bombs. With a population of over 30,000 before the full-scale invasion, Toretsk has been largely destroyed and devastated with most of the buildings shattered and only about 1,600 people staying in town after numerous evacuations. If Russian forces manage to capture the town, it would help Moscow obstruct key Ukrainian logistics routes connecting the operational rear and the combat zone. Now, the situation has also gotten increasingly difficult in eastern Ukraine, the primary target of Russia's invasion, since the capture of Vuhledar, which happened less than a week ago. Similar to Vuhledar, Toretsk has been a frontline town for 10 years due to its location, close to Ukraine's territories seized by Russia in 2014. As Israel's airstrikes and ground troops operations continue in Lebanon, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says Israeli forces have taken out the would-be successors of Hezbollah. Netanyahu also warned the people of Lebanon to rise up against Hezbollah or face a similar fate like Gaza. You have an opportunity to save Lebanon before it falls into the abyss of a long war that will lead to destruction and suffering like we see in Gaza. At least 1,400 Lebanese people have been killed since the fighting escalated three weeks ago. According to Viktor Orban, Ukraine cannot win the war and the European Union should aim for a ceasefire between Kiev and Moscow. The Hungarian Prime Minister is in Strasbourg presenting the priorities of the Hungarian Council Presidency to the European Parliament. His press conference was interrupted by a member of a Hungarian opposition party. He threw fake banknotes on the PM, calling him a traitor. Orban, who is often criticized for being supportive of Russia, told a room packed with reporters that better communication with President Putin was needed to get a ceasefire. Quizzed by Euronews, he conceded that in the meantime, EU countries could keep up their military aid to Ukraine on a national basis. Those, those who think what we are doing as European Union is good and strategically right, let's support the Ukrainians. Don't who disagree with that like Hungary, we don't. That belongs to the national government. The Hungarian Prime Minister also called for stricter controls to detect migrants at the borders and hotspots outside the EU. And he doubled down on the request for his country to be exempt from the new EU migration policy. He also still seems ready to send refugees to Brussels to protest against it. We will respect the European law, we will respect all the regulations, but if uh, somebody who get an asylum in Hungary would like to come to Brussels, you know, we are ready to have them. Hungary's presidency started in July, but their diplomats have been facing boycotts and isolation in the EU institutions from the start. Parliament's rapporteur for the situation, Hungary, believes Orban is actively undermining the common European asylum system. He uses the rhetoric just, you know, to get more uh, uh, a stronger position, uh, to, to blackmail in order to get EU funding. It, it's, it's a lot of rhetorics. 
and Orban's biggest prize for the Hungarian presidency? To get Romania and Bulgaria fully into the Schengen area, apparently. MEPs have held a debate on the state of the automotive industry as car manufacturers across the continent continue to face factory closures brought on by sluggish sales. A key focus of the debate was the decline in demands for European electric vehicles, a trend that's been exacerbated by rising competition from Chinese manufacturers. Car sales in the EU are below the pre-COVID level while China has become the largest market. Uh, also in the third market, the demand has shifted towards zero emission vehicles. Uh, we have set a clear framework for a transition to zero emission vehicles with a 100% zero emission cars target by 2035. But critics say the EU's 2035 target is impossible to meet, arguing there is not enough funding or infrastructure. Forzata trasformazione in elettrico. Non è sostenibile, non è realizzabile certo nei tempi teorizzati. Non esiste infrastrutturazione della rete, non vi è finanza sufficiente per realizzarla. Non esiste una domanda troppo costosa, non usabile quest'auto facilmente con parchi auto pieni e mercato bloccato. Non inquina meno. A resolution on the issue will be put to a vote in a future session. At the gates of the University of Seville in the south of Spain, a group of students begin to gather. It is one of the welcome events for Erasmus students who are about to begin classes. For many of them, the new course does not begin in classes. Instead, it begins with this tour to get to know the city. Well, today we're going to do is take a tour of the Eramus here in Sevilla, all over the center, to show them from the first hand how to move here and show them the most characteristic of the city. According to the Erasmus Student Network, Spain has been the country with the most Erasmus students, with about 150,000 this year alone. Madrid is the main destination with nearly 10,000 students, followed by Barcelona, Valencia and Seville, chosen this year as one of the destinations best valued by the students. Other best valued cities include Porto, Istanbul and Sofia. Es una ciudad con la que realmente nosotros anclamos muy bien la cultura española y asimismo también es relativamente barata para lo que un Erasmus puede permitirse. Los recortes en la financiación de los proyectos Erasmus podrían tener una repercusión que vaya mucho más allá del ámbito universitario, sobre todo en las economías locales de ciudades como Sevilla, que ven cada año cómo aumenta el número de estudiantes Erasmus. Thanks to the Erasmus program, the University of Seville received nearly 7 million euros of investments this year. An additional 10 million euros could be injected into the economy from the use of services in the city, catering to over 2,300 students. Io vivo in una residencia per estudiantes y, quest, y pago 700 euro cada mes. Y la comida para mí más o mie, menos 100 euros cada mes. Vienen muchísimos estudiantes extranjeros y claro consumen demasiado gracias a ellos, gracias a la universidad tenemos aquí bastante clientela y el negocio va súper bien gracias a lo que consumen y a lo que se gasta. MEPs on the EU Parliament's Budget Committee have opposed the proposal to cut about 295 million euros from the Erasmus program. Nuestra asociación tiene una postura clara respecto a eso y obviamente nosotros queremos que la beca Erasmus y la posibilidad de hacer una movilidad internacional esté disponible a todo el mundo, sea de la clase social que sea. Most of the students who travel for the program are the French, followed by Germans and in the third place the Spanish. This year has seen almost 400,000 fewer participants in the Erasmus program compared to last year, the first time that the numbers have started to fall after the pandemic. French truck drivers are blocking a main motorway in Alsace in protests against the potential introduction of a heavy goods vehicles tax from 2027. The new tax, which comes at a cost of 15 cents per kilometre, aims to reduce transit traffic on the A35 motorway, which sees up to 10,000 trucks pass along it each day. 
Many of these lorries use the Alsace motorway to avoid paying the high eco-taxes already in place on German motorways. Those working in the transit industry say the addition of this new tax would threaten the survival of some businesses. Dès qu'il y a une taxe, dès qu'il y a une taxe euh, qui arrive ou qui est censée arriver, euh, bah, ça nous impacte effectivement directement parce qu'on n'a absolument aucune marge de manœuvre. Local councillors are set to vote on the proposal on the 21st of October. Florida is preparing for what could be one of the most disruptive storms on record, as Category 5 Hurricane Milton is forecast to hit the areas of Tampa and St. Petersburg. Milton brushed the shore of Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula early on Tuesday, knocking down power lines, light poles and trees before making its way towards the Florida coast. Police have ordered evacuations in Largo, while residents in Venice stock up on sandbags to protect their homes. President Biden has postponed his planned trips to Germany and Angola and has urged people to follow local safety instructions. If you're under evacuation or orders, you should evacuate now, now, now. You should have already evacuated. It's a matter of life and death, and that's not hyperbole. It's a matter of life and death. The storm comes less than two weeks after Hurricane Helene devastated the region and cleanup efforts continue to clear debris before it can be swept up and hurled by Milton's powerful storm surges.